Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. I hope you guys are doing well today and I'm very excited to jump into today's video because we're doing something that I've been wanting to do for a while. And you guys have also requested this, so we are going to try to recreate some of those beautiful sculptural vases that I've seen all over the internet. They're very contemporary and also fit really nicely within a boho or a modern look. These also can get pretty pricey since they're original handmade pieces so of course the price is justified if you want to go that route but I love trying to figure out how to make things myself so that is what we're doing in today's video and I also want to give a shout out to every plate who's sponsoring today's video you guys know that I love every plate and the meal that I had this week was really good so I'll speak more on that later and before we get started don't forget to like and subscribe down below and let's go ahead and get started Okay, so my goal today is to create a sculptural piece that's gonna go perfectly in the dining room or even in the office. I've yet to decide where this will go in the end, but I do know that I want something a little bit on the larger scale. I bought this piece off of H&M and this was listed as a paper sculpture, which I didn't understand at the time what that really meant but I assume that this is made from paper mache clay. So that is what we're using today. I really love the whole vibe of this and how curvy it is and has a fun feature, like a hole in the middle. So I want to create something very similar to this, but even larger because if you guys can see, it's pretty big, but I would like something just a little bit taller than this. We're gonna be using some instant paper mache. This is gonna make the process so much faster. And before we actually get into it, I'm gonna go ahead and sketch out a few different options on what I want this piece to look like. Like, I'll be pulling some binspo from places like Instagram and Pinterest, but ultimately I want this to be an original piece. So let's get to sketching. Okay, so here are all of my sketches. I drew a couple over here that are actually inspired by other H&M vases, and I love all the curves of this one. I've also seen vases like this that have a little bit of an arch over here, and this is actually for putting in florals, and it's off-centered, so I like that idea a lot too. So I did many different variations, and I kind of like this one, but ultimately I like this one over here with kind of the four little things protruding out. It kind of combines a donut vase with a little arch. So I really like how this looks and I'm going to get started on the project. To build out the armature, I mostly use aluminum foil, paper, and some cardboard. You could also use things like wire to give your armature more strength. The first thing I did was to make the circle part and all you need to do is to roll up the foil and bunch it up a little bit and then connect it together to make a ring. So you wanna build this out almost as thick as how you want your piece to be. So you're gonna see that I add on a few layers to get my desired shape. And if you find that your foil is not holding together, you could also tape it up with some masking tape or you can even use hot glue to hold it all together. I wanted to save some foil because I actually was using quite a bit of this and I needed to use some for dinner that night. So for the arch part, I actually used paper to create the core of it and then I wrapped it around with foil. So you could see now that this is building up really nicely and the next thing that I needed to do was to create the bottom of the arch. It was important that it was flat so that we could stand it up so I cut out some circles with cardboard and this was going to be about the same thickness of the arched and I just used some hot glue to the bottom. Okay. 
Okay, now to glue the two parts together, I just used some good old hot glue here as well. And then I went ahead and wrapped it up with some masking tape for just a little bit more stability. And after that, we of course are going to add on even more foil. This project is the first time that I'm using paper mache to build a sculptural piece. So it was a lot of experimentation and trial and error. And I've learned that there are just so many ways that you can work with paper mache to create a beautiful piece. So I hope that showing you guys my process will help you create your own pieces as well. To complete our armature, we're going to create these little nubs sticking out on the top. So you're gonna see me roll up some foil and we're gonna glue that right to the top. And alternatively, you could also attach foil together with wire or something like a toothpick. Okay, so here's how it turned out. I think it looks really good, very reminiscent of things that I've seen in boho artwork. And it's such a good size as well. It is pretty sturdy, but once we get the paper mache on there, it's all going to come to life. I'm taking a quick pause on the project to talk about today's video sponsor, EveryPlate. I'm a big fan of EveryPlate, but if you haven't heard of them yet, they are America's best value meal kit that gets delivered straight to your door. And EveryPlate dinners are the cheaper and healthier alternative to takeout or delivery. They offer over 10 chef-designed recipes every week, so there's a lot to choose from. And every meal is about $4.99 per serving, which I think is a great value. So far, I've really loved every one of their meals, but this one has to be one of my top favorites, and it was just so easy to make as well. It's been so nice spending more time in the new kitchen. And one of the reasons why I really love every plate is because I get to learn new recipes and things to cook every week. And it just keeps making dinner feeling fresh and exciting every night because I definitely go through recipe rut as a newbie chef. And if you really like a recipe, you can also choose their double up option, which allows you to select more than one meal of your choice. The recipes come together in about 30 minutes, which is honestly faster than a trip to the grocery store. So you can spend more time cooking with your family or significant other at home and less time shopping and meal planning. Every plate gives you all the ingredients you need and everything is already pre-measured, so it makes it super easy and also saves food from going to waste. And not to mention, every plate is pledging to offset 100% of their carbon emissions, which is super awesome. Ooh, this smells so good. Mmm, definitely recommend. Oh, so good. Awesome. This was actually my first time cooking ginger, so I'm pretty impressed with myself. 10 out of 10 for this one. The taste of your cooking? Both. <laughs> and if you want to check out every plate for yourself, they're giving you guys an amazing offer. You can get your first box for only $1.79 per meal with my link down below. Plus, they're giving you an additional 20% off of your next two boxes with the link down below and using my special code as well. I have all that good information down below, so be sure to check it out. Okay, it is time to mix up our paper mache. So I am basically going to eyeball this and I'm mixing up my instant paper mache with some warm water. And this is really gonna depend on the consistency that you want your paper to be. I had about a one-to-one -one ratio of paper mache to water and I kind of made this a little bit more on the thin side to start with. You can also create your own paper mache at home with some shredded paper, glue, flour, and water. And there are a lot of different recipes out there, so I'm going to link some resources down below. So once that's all mixed together, I'm going to go ahead and add in some joint compound. This is gonna help create a smoother finish and also creates a more clay-like consistency. You can kind of see the difference of what it looked like before versus after mixing in the joint compound. And I have mixed in joint compound with paper mache before to make bowls. And if you haven't seen that tutorial yet, I'll have that link down below as well. With the rubber spatula, I'm spreading the paper mache clay right onto our armature and the paper mache clay is going to stick onto most surfaces. So all the little grooves in the foil gives it a little bit of grip to stick onto. But if you're using something like strips of paper to create paper mache, you will wanna make sure that the surface underneath is going to be something like paper or masking tape to allow it to stick. I found this to be very buildable and the rubber spatula really helped me spread on the clay nicely. So this is definitely going to be a tool that you want to have. And I'm using a small one just to get into all those little nooks and crannies. 
Some advantages to using paper mache clay is that it is environmentally friendly because you're using a lot of recycled paper and it is also very durable. So in the past, I have thought about making larger scale pieces like this with air dry clay or polymer clay, but I was always afraid that it would break really easily. So I find that with paper mache clay, once it's dry, the piece is gonna be so much harder and stronger and it just doesn't feel as fragile. So handling it won't really be an issue and it's also super lightweight. Okay, so once the paper mache clay hardened a little bit, I went back in with the rubber spatula to smooth it all out. And you can already see the difference between the two sides. This seriously works so well. And I also found that the paper mache was a lot nicer to work with once it dried down more. So that way it's a little bit thicker and felt like a true clay consistency. You guys look how dark it is and it's only five o'clock. Ah, daylight saving. Here's where we're at with the sculpture. It's looking really good. I just have to do a little bit more here on the bottom, but I'm gonna let it dry first before I touch the actual underside and then these edges. The instant paper mache that I'm using actually dries pretty quickly, but to speed up the process even more, you could put this next to a heating vent and that's gonna help it so much. So that's what I'm gonna do right now and I'll check back in with you guys when it's dry. It is the next day and this has hardened down completely and it is pretty solid. Let me do a knock test for you guys. It feels pretty sturdy as well. I put this next to a vent so that it would dry faster and that worked out really perfectly and you know when it's dry when it turns to this white color. The next thing I wanna do is just to fill up any of these small gaps over here and also finish off the bottoms since they are still the foil. And if you have any leftover paper mache, all you have to do is cover it and then keep it somewhere cool and that way it'll stay wet. So I have a tiny little bit here, but I think that's going to be perfect to finish up the project. So I'm gonna finish up filling up some of the gaps and then we can move on to the next step. the final stretch this is looking pretty good the last thing we need to do is just to kind of smooth it all up it is really bumpy right now i'm going to sand it down as best as i can and while you're doing this you definitely want to be wearing a mask because dust is going to get everywhere and then after that to make it look even more smooth i'm going to take more of the joint compound and i'm going to use a rubber spatula to smooth it all out i learned this trick from ultimate paper mache on youtube and if you haven't seen her channel yet please check it out she is literally the sweetest woman she has such amazing tips and is the paper mache master so if you're looking for more paper mache projects or tips definitely go to that channel Channel. So that's really all we have to do to finish this project. These are going to be the very last steps. So let's finish this project. You can use a sanding block or sanding paper for this part. I kind of use a combination of both to try as best as I could to smooth out some of those larger bumps. I honestly didn't mind if there was some unevenness on the surface just because I didn't want it to look perfect and have a little bit of texture on there. But when it came to some of those smaller bumps from the paper, I definitely wanted to smooth those out. I've also seen pieces with a much more textured surface as well, so if you like the bumpy look, you could just leave it and skip the next step as well. Moving on to the next step, I'm using my rubber spatula and some joint compound again, and here I'm spreading on a very thin layer. This is gonna do a really good job of getting into those small divots in the paper mache and fill it up to create a really smooth surface. And again, I think the rubber spatula is key in getting the best finish and you can already see what a difference it's making. So I let that dry down for about an hour and here's how it's looking. We're gonna smooth the joint compound even more by using a damp towel and you'll see that I'm wiping it with some small circular motions. And since joint compound is not waterproof, you're kind of able to wipe it away and make it super even. I really like this method just because you don't have to deal with any more sanding or dust, but if you want to go down that route, you can totally use a fine grit sandpaper for this step as well. 
Okay, so for our last step, we have to seal it or paint it. So it's really up to you here. I added some gesso just to prime this first. And I also think it's gonna do a really good job of protecting the joint compound since it's very soft as well. And from there you can paint it or do whatever you want with it. I went ahead and used a stone spray paint in the color limestone. This is just one of my favorite spray paints now. I really love the color and the texture that this gives. So this is a must have in my DIY arsenal now. I did about two coats of that and then one clear top coat and with that our paper mache piece is done. This paper sculpture was so much fun for me to create and figure out how to make it exactly how I wanted it. I plan on styling this in another room so look out for a little cameo of this piece in a future makeover video and I think this really does look like a pricey sculpture you would find at a high-end home decor shop and all it really took was paper mache, joint compound, and a little bit of patience. I cannot believe how well the project turned out and I hope you guys liked going through this whole journey with me. It definitely was a process and I hope that watching this video helps you guys learn as well. I cannot wait to see all of your projects after this video goes up. I know they're gonna be amazing. And if you wanna share them with me, be sure to tag me over on Instagram and give me a follow. I post on there every single day. And a big thank you to EveryPlate for sponsoring today's video. If you're interested in checking them out and getting your first box for only $1.79 per meal, make sure to click on my link down below and also use my discount code. I'll have all the info down below. And that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!